Well, hello again. My name is Charles Rogers, pastor of the Hope Community Church. We're located at 1111 Pulaski Pike, right here in Huntsville, Alabama. I want to invite you to come and be a part of our worship service. Our Sunday morning worship times are at 9 a.m. and at 11, and I think you'll really enjoy the Hope Community family. You know, this year we accepted and selected the theme, Change from the Inside Out. The Bible says in Romans 12 and 2, and be not conform or do not copy the behavior of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, oftentimes in our prayer petitions, we always ask God to change our environment, change the people around us. But this year, our prayer is God change me. I pray that you would join us uh, this year in our, ch in our challenge to change, that God will transform our mind. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3 and 18, and we all uh, with unveiled face uh, as in a mirror beholding the glory of God, we're changed into the same image from glory to glory. And I'm glad to see that happening in the body and I'm excited to see it happen right here at Hope Community Church. Why don't you join us? We are the hope in the valley.
Come on, it's in the book of Acts. I, I better read it or we ain't going to have nothing but church. I, my God. Ooh. <laughs> Y'all gonna have to excuse me because I'm. Lord have mercy. In the 28th chapter of the book of Acts, it's, it's, it's the word for us today. Thank God for um, uh, Sister Sarita, your team again. Thank, thank you for um, surrendering to God. And, and we're gonna, uh, you know, we gonna evangelize the whole earth. We, we, we are. And, and, and I want some of you to get some tennis shoes and get out of these high stilettos and it's so that we can uh, go into some neighborhoods and, and y'all understand what I'm saying. You see, because you know, when you go into the hood, you don't want to be too cute. I can't get nobody. You can be bougie anywhere, but you better come down to earth. You gotta be real people when you hit the street. Do I have somebody who say amen? And so uh, we gonna, sharing these great blessings, understand somebody, uh, I'll say again, uh, came to the Lord while they were out and uh, they're going out again today and that's, you know, that's a powerful thing and we ask God for a hundred and uh, we gonna, uh, we'll be showing you how close we are. Uh, you know, we wanna hear your testimonies too because some of you are gonna be leading your, your relatives to the Lord and, and uh, we gonna be baptizing them in the water. And so we want to know. We we you know uh, we can't tell God who to save, uh, but we can we can go to the ones uh, that we know God all to save. I can't. <laughs> amen. amen. If you got somebody who is uh, unusually evil, you need to you know. <laughs> amen. <laughs> you need to tell them Jesus saved. <laughs> amen. And that's all I'm saying. Uh, so thank God for that. Thank God for Sister Rogers and uh, Christian uh, Education. They did an off-campus uh, satellite ministry today in, uh, in a Boys and Girls Club and uh, just took the message there. And they're going to continually do that um, to take uh, this truth because, uh, you know, you can't just uh, have church in church. Amen. You got to start learning how to have church uh, everywhere and preaching everywhere. All right. Uh, in the 28th chapter, let me just read a few verses there you have it say amen. amen and when they were escaped then they knew that the island was called Melita and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness for they kindled a fire and received us everyone because of the present rain and because of the cold and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and lay them on the fire. There came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the bar barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer whom, though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not him, suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. Uh, <laughs> Lord have mercy. But after they looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said, he is a God. And the church said, amen. On your way to your seat, you, I want you to look at somebody and say, I, it should have killed me. That's, that's, that's what I needed you to know. Look at somebody else and say, it should have killed me. Oh, God. The book of Acts is the second of the writings by the apostolic physician named Luke. It is really a theological chronology 
or it provides a systematic narrative about the formation of the historical development of the early church. The Acts of the Apostles set forth the details really uh, of the remarkable way in which the Holy Ghost operated in the lives of the early believers. How the Spirit of God moved in the lives of the people who were being changed by God to turn their certain defeat into victory and reverse certain death and allow them to live. Things they should have never survived, they survived because of God. Never should have survived the backlash of the Jewish people. Never should have survived Roman political pressure. But if God be for you, most of what we see in our lives, we can't even take credit for. It's just God that's for us. Don't always know why he is for us. When so many times we've walked away from him and disobeyed him. But I'm glad. You shouldn't need anybody to help you praise him for that. Because every one of us can think of one thing that we know that if it wasn't for God, we would not have lived. That time when uh, had you not turned back and went back home, you would have died. That time when you didn't, if you didn't leave when you did, something bad would have happened. That time when the doctor said that there's nothing else he could do, but God said live. That time when you, uh, if the light hadn't been green when it did, when it turned green, one thing that uh, didn't have nothing to do with you, but it was all about God. God had to pull you out of some things that if, he, if you didn't know God the way you do, you would almost believe in luck. Yeah. That's why you ain't having any problems today when somebody says praise him. Because you understand with all the things that God has done in your life, surely he's worthy of praise. Psalms 48 says that he alone is excellent. His glory is above the nations. Exodus 15 says, who is like the Lord? Uh, I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but uh, you may have had people to help you and bless you and been good to you. But who is like the Lord? If it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, uh, I don't know where you would be. Uh, some of you are living with things that you've seen other folks die from. Uh, you smoked and you drank and ran around like everybody else. But some of the people you saw and knew, they caught cancer in their lungs. But your lungs are fine. You smoked, uh, you drank, and other people died with liver uh, failure. But you've been drinking all your life and you ain't got no problem at all. Don't know how it is that you have lived through some of the stuff that you have walked through. So because uh, God has been good to you, whenever you get in the presence of God, you don't waste no time lifting up your hands. See, there's a few people who have to be convinced to praise him. Uh, but uh, a few of us in here, all we have to do is think of the goodness. I can't get nobody in here of Jesus. And praise just begin to spring up out of us. We'll praise him a choir and without a musician we'll praise him if the church is open or locked we learn how to praise him not just on the church ground but we learn how to praise him in the living room because we figured out that he's been good to us even though the devil decided to that we would be dead do I have any witnesses in here I don't know uh, I don't just bless him for the stuff that I've seen but I praise him for stuff that I didn't have to see do I have anybody in here I praise him for the times he kept the car that was next to me from crossing over in the lane with me I can't get no I praise him for the days in which I left the door open but he wouldn't let the crook cross the path I can't get nobody in here I praise him for sitting on my job and didn't know this crazy rascal was thinking about shooting up the place but God held his hand is there anybody
anybody in here know that his mercy endure forever? You woke up this morning and somebody got to convince your crazy tail to clap your hand. You must have lost your mind. But if you don't praise him, let me praise him. He still been. Stop somebody high five and say I'll praise him for myself. Praise him with you or without you. Praise him if you remember anything or not. I just bless the Lord at all. Bless his holy name. I got a reason to praise him. I got a reason to thank him. The children of Israel always lived in the favor of God. Often found themselves, however, unthankful and complaining about what they didn't get from God. Without ever considering the mercies that they already received by the hand of God. And if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves complaining about something that God has already done. We'll complain about somebody hating us and lying on us. Not knowing that God uses the lie to bless us. How many know that there's a blessing? and in your grief when folk don't like you and, and talk about you God says it's the only way I could have pushed you to where I needed you to be because you got too comfortable so it was a blessing they complained that they didn't have any food and complained they didn't have any water and some of you are the same way sleeping in warm houses eating good food and acting like God ain't done nothing at all but I came to tell somebody today you're in a situation where you complain it but God at least let you live he let you live when you didn't deserve to live I feel somebody he let you live when the enemy wanted you dead it should have killed you the last time you had the accident it should have killed you the car was tore up but you walked out dusting yourself wondering what in the world went wrong how now are you going to come in here and let somebody convince you that God is good? He's already good. I wish I had some. He's already God. He's all by himself. He's altogether wonderful. Because if God said that you're going to live, I don't care what anybody else say. You shall live. Do I have any witnesses in this place? Throw your head back and shout thank God said he was going to bless him. And when God said he's going to bless you, get ready to be blessed. God says, I'll do whatever I need to do. When the children of Israel was coming against, had Pharaoh come against them. The Bible says that they were trapped by the Red Sea. But don't you know God opens up everything that's in your way. God will open up your sea if you would just believe him. Whatever have you trapped if you just keep on believing God. I hear God God say, whatever's in front of you, keep on walking. Do I have anybody in here? I don't care what it looks like, walk through it. I don't know who this is for, but God says, no matter how hard and how high and how deep your obstacle is, keep on walking. Quit looking at it and walk through it. Because when you keep walking, God will open up whatever's in your way. He'll drown your enemy. He'll quit your enemy behave because God said I'm God we got to start believing God the Bible says in Exodus 14 and the Lord said to Moses listen to this and the Lord said to Moses you see the reason I know God's getting ready to do something crazy at hope is because the Lord said it now, I know we're in a day where I'm tired of a lot of prophet lying. You know, people saying God said stuff that God never said. But God said. See, whenever God said a thing, you can stand on it. Whenever God said a thing, you quit getting second opinions about it. Can't quit worrying about what other, whoever else see it. If nobody else see it, you stand up and say, but God said it. I don't
Oh, no, I know I don't look like I deserve it. But I can't get nobody in here. To, <laughs> hallelujah. Go ahead and touch somebody and say, but God said it. I know I don't deserve the promotion, but God said it. I know I don't deserve no house, but God said it. I know they look, the doctor said, ain't gonna never be healed of this, but God said it. God spoke to Moses. In the book of Exodus, he did. Exodus means departure. It means exit or coming out. And I need to preach this in this house. God's about to let somebody exit some things this morning that would have already killed you. But God said you've been in it long enough. And he brought you into this service to have uh, your going out party. It's time for you to have an exodus. Uh, and you ain't got nothing to do with it. Uh, but it's all because of God. Uh, God said to Moses, uh, he said, stand still. I'm tired of you thinking you got to fight everything that you got to come through. Sometimes all, all you need to do is just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Uh, what does he say? He says, the enemies that you see today, you will see them again no more forever. Do I have anybody in here. God told me to tell you in this house that thing you fight today you won't have to fight it again no more. Come on and throw your hands up and say no more forever. No more forever. This is the last time I'm going to have to fight this. This is the last time I'm going to have to deal with this joker. This is the last time I'm going to have to slap somebody a high five and tell them it's over. Go ahead and touch somebody else and say it's over. I know it don't look like it's over. I know my situation don't look changed, but you got to just trust me by faith. It's over. This is the last time I'm going to wrestle with it. This is the last time I'm walking out of here with it. It's, it's over. It's over. It's over. Some of you ain't nothing but the grace of God that you still hear. Nothing. Yes. Nothing but the grace of God. That you ain't all you should have died in the car wreck. You know it. You should have died giving birth. You know it. But God. But God. You still sustaining, still surviving, still breathing, and still you, it, it ain't got nothing to do with nothing you did but God. You should have overdosed, you know it. You made mistakes and you know it. Laid down with dogs and didn't get up with fleas. He been. He said, "I don't know your name. I just call you Boo." Listen, you you know it. You you should not have lived. I dare you to touch somebody and say, "I know it. I know. I know. I should be dead. I know I shouldn't have survived." But God. But God. Let's look at this text very quickly. We. All through the book of Acts, we see the hand of God. And in the latter end of Paul's life, we see the miracle of God sustaining him when everything that he was going through should have killed him. The Bible says in Acts 21 that Paul was arrested in the temple while in Jerusalem. And he should have been killed. But the Bible says that the temple police rescued him because there was a mob that wanted to stone him. In chapter 23, it says that the Sanhedrin determined that he should be put to death, but they couldn't kill him. In, in Acts chapter 24, he moved, they moved him to Caesarea for safekeeping and had another trial with Felix. And though they found him not guilty, they locked him up in prison for two years. They should have killed him. When it gets down after the two years of prison, instead of going, they set up a mock trial to have him put to death without much fanfare. But he began. 
This entire powerful message could not fit our broadcast today, but you can have this message in its entirety on DVD, VHS, CD, or cassette by calling us at 256-534-8750. This and every broadcast seen on our telecast are available for your media collection. Don't wait. Call today, 256-534-8750.